I want you to imagine a very dangerous day. You wake up in the morning looking like this after a very, very peaceful night. However, the house that you've just woken up in is in an area that's surrounded by a place which is very prone to earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. You get out of bed, you go down to your bathroom, you fill up your bathroom sink full of water, and you push aside all of the electrical appliances next to you. You don't get electrocuted. On your way out of the bathroom, on the way out of the house, you grab the only thing which you can find for breakfast, which happens to be a very high in fat, high calorie, high sugar, high cholesterol uh, breakfast. That's the only thing you have. On the way out of the house, you narrowly avoid your swimming pool. You don't fall into your swimming pool and you do not drown. And as you get to your car, you narrowly avoid eye contact with your neighbor, whom you know really hates you and has an assault rifle in his backyard. <laughs> you get into your car, you start driving, you turn on the radio, you hear stories of ISIS, Ebola, measles, all of these risks, some of the most contagious and deadly diseases to ever reach American soil. You get to your destination, which happens to be an airport. You get into a giant tube of metal. You go up 35,000 feet in the air, supported only by wings which are narrow, uh, narrow and thinner than your car door. You're fine. And just before you go to sleep, you uh, reach into the uh, seat pocket in front of you. You grab the bag of peanuts. You read the choking hazard. You're fine. You eat the peanuts. You go to sleep. Everything's OK. Pretty dangerous day. Did you know that out of all of these risks that you had today, the, the peanuts, the angry neighbor with the assault rifle, the high calorie breakfast, the swing pool, Ebola, none of these were the most dangerous things you did today. It was actually getting into your car and driving. Every year, 1.2 million people die on our roads. To put that into perspective, that's the equivalent of a jumbo jet full of people falling out of the sky every three hours. Every three hours, every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year. Now I came to Stanford to think, what can I do? What is my role in preventing the massive uh, spectrum of human suffering? And what can I do to substantially improve human life? And when I look at these statistics, I think this is a pretty good place to start. Why does this happen? What can we do about it? Well, it turns out that 93% of accidents happen because of human error. Why? Because we're human. <laughs> we get careless. We make mistakes. We get distracted. We're rational. We make bad decisions. We're human. The problem is, though, with accidents that w when we get into one, we don't just affect ourselves, but we affect other people around us as well. Therefore, if we want to do something to substantially reduce the number of people who die on our roads, we need to do something about taking out some of the human elements from driving and replacing it by computers that can make better, faster, more accurate decisions on our behalf. And it looks like this, an autonomous vehicle. Now, as soon as I say replacing some of the human elements of driving with cold, hard computers, I'm already feeling this visceral reaction that we have in this room about extracting some of the warm, fuzzy, emotional human elements and replacing it with cold, hard numbers. But I want you to go with me for one moment. Go with me for a second. I want you to imagine a safer world. I want you to imagine a safer world where 35,000 people do not die on our roads every single year. That's two people since this talk began. I want you to imagine a safer world where you do not have to share your roads with 65% of other drivers who are using their cell phones at the same time. I want you to imagine a safer world where the 112 million people who drive under the influence of alcohol are not driving on the same roads that my future children and your children are going to be playing on. And lastly, I want you to imagine a, a safer world where you never have to look for parking again, <laughs> nor pay another parking fine. <laughs> imagine that world. Why aren't we there yet? To me, it comes down to how we make decisions about adopting new technologies, both as consumers and also as regulators. 
You see, good decision making about whether to adopt a new technology or not is made by understanding diligently the, the benefits and the costs. If the benefits outweigh the costs, then you do adopt the new technology, otherwise you do not. The problem is that with autonomous vehicles, we have no idea what the benefits are because we haven't tried them, we haven't given them a shot. On the other hand, as soon as we start thinking of the risks, given that we live in such a risk-averse society, we blow these risks out of proportion and we, we engage our rationalities and fears to, to make them much larger than what they are. And that's something to think about because when we want to understand which technologies to adopt, we need to understand both of them. Now, additionally to being at the GSB, I'm also a magician. And my, and my job as a magician is to understand where the line is drawn between perception and reality. And when I think of the risks of autonomous vehicles, I don't see reality, I see perceived risks. I'll explain. You see, a lot of people think it's terrible to give up their control of their driving to someone else, but they have no issue about getting into an Uber and giving up their control of the driving to someone they have no idea about. They have no issue, and we have no issue, about getting to an airplane and letting our flights be controlled by computers on autopilot. We have no issue getting into a New York subway or a London underground and having the, the flow of the carriages controlled by car, co cold, hard numerical algorithms there. Computers already make life or death decisions for us on a daily basis and it's time to apply that to the number one cause of death for people between the ages of 3 and 34. So what I ask of you is not to put aside your fears of autonomous vehicles, but to keep them into proportion and also give necessary credence to their benefits as well. The fact that we don't have to live in a world where 35,000 people die on just US roads every year. The fact that you will not have to share your, your roads with people who are either drunk or texting. The fact that you will have countless extra hours every year to, of extra economic productivity. What I ask of you is not to just discount autonomous vehicles as a new in thing, the new fad of Silicon Valley but to go out and to tell your friends, to tell your colleagues, to tell your family about how much safer this world will be if we begin to adopt them. One day I want to look back into the world that we live in today where there was so much unnecessary human suffering and think that we and autonomous vehicles were part of that solution. Thank you.